Hello, everybody. Today we're going to continue with the resurrection appearances of our Lord. Uh, reading from the New Revised Standard Version, John chapter 20. And today we're going to read verses 19 through the end of this chapter, uh, verse 31. Uh, just as a little editorial note, and you'll understand when I get to about verse 30. Um, this was the original ending to the book of John, and uh, we'll talk about uh, chapter 21. I think tomorrow we'll get into that. But uh, uh, anyway, let's listen. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced, for they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. As I said, the original work of John, this is the final word. Um, big major movements here. Uh, first of all, that Jesus is resurrected in body. Um, his number one greeting is peace, calm. Um, I would hope that as you spend time in prayer alone with God, that perhaps that's the number one message you receive is peace. Uh, peace be with you. That's an ongoing gift that God offers to you and to me. The next big thing is in the reception of the Holy Spirit. Um, as a disciple of the Lord, that, um, and I don't fully understand it, but you and I are vested with the gift of giving and receiving forgiveness. Um, in it, it's, it's a matter of fact, that you, you're in, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Um, all of this does have to do with offense that's been done either to us, uh, through us, around us. Um, but you and I have been given moral weight as the daughters and as the sons of God to be a part of God's forgiving work. Um, be generous as you would hope God would be generous with you. That's probably the best thing I could say. Uh, the next thing is... is um, Thomas's word, uh, it's been very famous. He's been called Doubting Thomas. Basically, he says, hey, I'm not going to believe this unless I physically touch uh, the wounds of our Lord. And guess what? Jesus shows up. I don't know how many times you've had moments of doubt and thought, well, Lord, if you would just only, holy mackerel. I bet Thomas was sitting there going, uh, that's not what I expected, right? It is important for us in this story in the next week, or actually uh, towards the end of next, this week, we'll read another story of how Jesus is physically, not just intellectually, not spiritually, Jesus' body is reanimated in the resurrection. And Thomas is invited to touch, to, to experience and see. Um, blessed are you and I who have not seen, and yet we believe. 
The last part of this in verse 30 and 31, sometimes we take for granted that we have the Gospels and we fail to realize why the Gospels were put together. And this line really tells us in verse 31, it's there so that you may believe and by believing have life in his name. Remember, life um, in John's gospel has a lot more to do with uh, the life of God. In other words, the way you were designed to experience it. The fullness of life, the abundance of life, the joy of life. Um, and then verse 30. Um, the scriptures as a whole are not exclusive, exclusive very, is that a word? exclusionarily written. In other words, if it's not there, it didn't happen. We literally have the highlight reel. Okay. There's a lot more that probably happened. Well, we know that to happen with Jesus, but these are selected stories, selected events that are relayed. Why? So that you and I may have life. Let's pray. God, we thank you and we Thank you for the mystery of the resurrection and how you bring us to the fullest extent that we human beings can possibly comprehend about what it means to, to have life in you. I pray for all of us um, as we celebrate this reading, but also as we prepare for the birth of Christ. Um, may we become an extension of, of the incarnate work uh, of your gospel in this world. In Jesus' name, amen.